Yeah, yeah. a big story coming out of not much happening. Hello, Blood Redders. It's the international break, and Paul Gorse and I are going to have a little chat today about Emre Chan, who um, is making headlines in Italy, Paul, because he's been left fuming, his words, not mine, um, because he's been left out of Juventus' Champions League squad. Um, funny player, Chan, always one that sort of divided opinions here on Merseyside. Um, went off to Juventus on a free transfer a couple of years ago, and it's not quite worked out the way you'd hope. It hasn't. No, he, he ran his contract down, didn't he, at Anfield, so the pool conceded defeat and let a £40 million pound German international midfielder go on a free. I think that was probably the biggest thing that, that rankled with Liverpool when he left. It wasn't the fact that they were losing him as a player, it was more the fact that he had the value, didn't he? He was a first-team player and, to be fair, he never he never shirked his responsibilities in the, in the closing stages of his Liverpool contract. He always gave his all, but uh, did leave on a free. Um, I don't think Liverpool were, and Jürgen Klopp was, was massively disappointed to lose him. I think it would have been the manner in which he left, obviously leaving them um, in the lurch slightly on a free transfer. And his replacement, Fabinho, cost around about £40 million, so it might have been a, a decent fee that he could have got for Chan. But um, I don't think, as you mentioned there about opinions being divided, I don't think he's someone who would have thrived in this Liverpool team. I think he was probably someone who liked to dictate the tempo and... and possibly slow things down, take three or four touches when maybe only one or two were needed. And that is completely at odds with the Liverpool's midfield at the moment with Fabinho, Wijnaldum and Henderson and, and uh, James Milner. So I think he's always an interesting one just because of, of the way he left. I don't think yeah. too many people that were disappointed at seeing him go and his replacements, Naby Keita and Fabinho coming in. I don't think there was much sleep lost, but I think it was more the manner of his departure, which, you know, just over a year on now seems to have already turned sour. Yeah, it's it's easy to sit here and look back in hindsight and say, "Oh, see, you shouldn't have, shouldn't have mm. left." Um, can you can you understand why why perhaps he, he looked at Juventus and thought that that was a better place to be than Liverpool? Yeah, they're the biggest biggest club in Italy, aren't they? They're always um, they're always there or thereabouts for the Champions League. They, they pretty much win it every season in Italy. The Serie A title and at a time. When Liverpool, OK, they, they obviously surged towards the Champions League final that season, but uh, still finished fourth didn't he, on, the, on the final day, even though it was relatively comfortable. Mm. And I think he might have looked at it and thought, Juventus is going to be the, the one for me where I'll pick up a host of Scudetto titles and maybe even a Champions League. It hasn't quite worked out that way for him and Liverpool have just gone on to another level, which might have been difficult to predict when he, he possibly made his mind up that he was deciding to leave, which would have been long before the Champions League final, so possibly... When Liverpool were only in what the last sixteen, maybe quarterfinals at best, perhaps chance mind was already made up. Yeah, well, I had a little debate with Doyle yesterday. I, I tend to think he he wouldn't get near this midfield now. Mm. Uh, Doyle disagreed. What, what do you think? Do you think he's he's getting in this midfield in any way? I don't. I think he'd be a good squad option. But if you look mm. at Liverpool's midfield now, they they play three, don't they? And they've got what seven options. Mm. Um, the, the midfield three now obviously I think Fabinho personally I think he's nailed it down yeah, he's got yeah. his spot at the base of it so it's um, you've got what six midfielders fighting for two spots uh, Jordan Henderson and Jeannie Van Aldum seem to have the shirt at the moment Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain obviously offers a lot Naby Keita when he regains fitness um, Adam Lallana and James Milner as well both vastly experienced so Chan would by no means get into this midfield he'd be a good option but I think um more often than not, he'd be kicking his heels on the bench. Yeah, all right. Well, Liverpool have also released their Champions League squad today, 29 men strong. Um, not too many surprises, I think it's fair to say, mm. but I suppose that the one or two surprises you pick is Andy Lonergan included as a fourth goalkeeping choice. And um, Keanu Hoover left out. Yeah, Keanu Hoover left out. I think um, I, th I think for this one, I think that the, the, the list B, as it is, Liverpool have submitted two lists to UEFA. Mm -hmm. List A and List B, and, and List B centres around the amount of time a player's been at a club from a certain age, mm -hmm. born after a certain date. I think it's the 1st of January, 1998, um, which made me feel quite old when I seen it uh, <laughs> this morning. Uh, Keanu Hoover's only been at Liverpool just over a year or so, hasn't he? Um, so he's not someone who the club have trained up from a, from a certain age. So I think that's played a part in it. Uh, players like Trent Alexander-Arnold have, mm -hmm. uh, Adam Lewis. And I think the fact that Liverpool have already got five centre-backs in that list Obviously, Joel Matip, Virgil van Dijk, Joel Gomez, Dayan Lovren and Sepp van den Berg. And then at right back, they've got a, a host of options as well. Trent, Joe Gomez, um, Fabinho and James Milner. So I think Liverpool have probably looked at that and thought, 
there isn't a space for him, which is fair enough. He's only 17. He's got plenty of years on his side. His time will come, and uh, sure, he might be a little bit disappointed, but it's not. It's no slight on him um, that he's been left out. Oh, well, what what are you going to do now? We've still got about 12 days of this international break. <sighs> Counting down the hours, aren't we? Counting yeah, down the days. Yeah. Um, it is a long way to go. The Pools players have, for the, the large part, have got time off. Um, well earned time off if you're not an international. And uh, they, I think they've returned next week, um, fully refreshed and ready to go again. And Captain down the days to Newcastle, which now seems an awful long way away. Yeah, well, we're already fully refreshed and ready to go again. And when, when they do come back, it, really busy period, Newcastle and then Napoli and then Chelsea away. So we'll get right back to it. Until then, we'll be finding things like Emery Chan to talk about <laughs> and passing the time to, during this international break. Cheers for watching.